What's up guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and I'm finally back with episode number three of the how to make a frame lock flipper tutorial. Not really a tutorial, kind of a build along with me, and let's figure it out. Now, I have a good excuse for being away this time, and that's it. That's right guys, she said I do too, and she didn't take off running. Uh, which is a great thing. I ended up marrying my best friend, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to uh, maybe touch on that a little bit in another video. It's been way too long. I know you guys are dying for the frame lock series to continue, so let's jump into that. We'll get to all the fun stuff later. So now, now that we have our blade back, what do we do? Well, we don't really need this right now. We can grind it, I guess, but eh, clean it up maybe. Not yet. What we're going to work on is handles. Now here's our draft site template. You got your, that's what we hope the blade looks like when it's open, closed, or some kind of iteration of that. But here's the important part right here guys, is the handles. We need this and this. So I went ahead and I cut those out. Now we're going to make this out of titanium. Right? You, you ca I guess you could use steel and some steels with the spring properties. Honestly, I don't know which kind. Uh, I know you can get it, but it's going to be massively heavy, guys. Uh, just go for the titanium. Now, a couple of tips with titanium, where to get it and what to get. Typically, I go to Alpha Knife Supply, uh, and I recommend you guys do too if this is your first time using it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and get yourself a small bar. Now, this is a bar of steel, but I'm going to use it as a reference. You would get something like this. Actually, have a leftover piece of the titanium from Alpha Knife, Alpha Knife Supply. There's their phone number, as you can see right there. There's the cost for the bar was 26 bucks and 138 thick. Now, I'm going to go a little bit thicker just to give us a little wiggle room. So, if you go on their website and you see that there's 156 thick available, that's what I'm going to be using for this build. Uh, now, they have two grades. There's knife maker grade and standard grade. I called them up and asked them what the difference was. And knife maker grade is the way to go, bar none. Do not bother with standard grade. I bought a piece of standard grade just to see how bad it was. And uh, it was it's pretty wavy. We cannot have that. We need perfectly flat. They grind it or they do something to it and it comes in like this. This is a bar of steel from them, but it comes in ground pretty flat. Uh, save you a lot, a lot of headaches down the road. I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek. Yes, I did come back from my wedding and honeymoon about a week ago. So as soon as I landed, I ran right into the shop and I got to work. Uh, and my real job, of course. And uh, here's a little hint. I have a feeling this frame lock's going to work. And uh, that's why. That's the Albatross model, guys. Little quick, uh, quick glimpse. If you're on Instagram, you already saw that. So, if you guys want to check it out a little more, go to my Instagram page. I'll have a link for that down below as well. Ow, titanium sharp. I'm very, very happy about that. A goofy grin I got. <laughs> Let's deburr those corners. If you don't have a deburring wheel like this, this is just a fine scotch Bright wheel. Just take yourself, uh, get yourself a little file, on like a 45 degree angle, just nice and lightly. Go off and knock those those burrs off the corner from the bandsaw. I glued up the templates. I lapped it pretty quickly on my other grinder surface plate with some sandpaper on it. Just to see where we're at, just kind of get some of the burrs off and flatten it a bit. And now I can check it on my other granite plate, tap all over, no clicking, means it's pretty flat. It's not moving at all, so that's flat enough for this part of the build. And here's the other one, same thing, you don't, if you're over here and it's clicking away as you're tapping on it, it means uh, you're not flat. So you just want to check it on your granite plate. This is important, guys. Do not um, 
do not glue up your templates unless you have it flat and parallel. Uh, uh, this plate I got from American uh, Metal Exchange is uh, pr pretty good so far. So okay, now we're going to mark out these holes. As you see, we're just going to go for that little bullseye right there uh, with the optical center punch, which we have in here. This guy right here. Let's see. You see, it's got a little crosshair on it, so you line it up like that. We got our one, two, three blocks set up in the vise, just like last time when we were doing the blade. I was sitting up on some parallels tap down so they're not moving so we know it's nice and level and we're going to drill with a number 13 bit uh, right through that divot I made there you can see it right on that uh, crosshair and we're going to do it about 300 rpms uh, titanium likes to grab so I put this can twist clamp just like last time to prevent the dreaded helicopter I'm pushing pretty firmly but I'm not forcing anything. Sharp bits only guys with titanium. Don't even bother if it's, when in doubt, get a new bit, get a new cutter, whatever you're using. Bandsaw blades, anything, titanium is kind of picky. Sharp tools only. I swapped out to a carbide chucking reamer. Uh, 1875 is the measurement because we're going to use a 3 16 pivot. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to clean up these holes and ream them to size. Remember, you always ream to size. Same setup as before. Slow feed. Go through. See inside the hole, you got that real nice mirror shine. That's what you want when you're cutting titanium and drilling it. Uh, you will get these burrs here, but we're going to go through and we're going to just deburr them quickly. Guys, a lot of this might look a little repetitive from the first video when we milled the stop pin track, but that's on purpose. It is important that we get everything exactly the same as last time. So we're going to use the same precision ground drill rod or 3 16 precision rod or whatever this is and a lot of you guys asked uh, where did you get the tapered one I just put this in a drill and I tapered it myself uh, you don't really need the taper it's got a little chamfer on the edge and that should be good enough so now I'm going to chuck this in here tighten down my collet and our same piece of G10 we're going to line this up with that precision rod. Go ahead and put it all the way into the G10 like that. I'll zoom you in so you can see it. The quill is locked down. And I got my 2 inch 1, 2, 3 clamp. And we're going to just lock down that piece of G10 so it can't move. Now the reason I used the G10 here is so I have something to drill into. Uh, in case I wanted to drill through. In this case, we're not going to. We're just going to mark the holes. And we're going to mark them with this eighth of an inch spade, um, what do I call that? Center drill. Excuse me, I almost forgot. Eighth inch spade center drill. Now remember again, we're only going to move the Y axis, so forward and back. So we'll go ahead and zero these out anyway. Zero and zero. Okay, so now, when I bring this guy up, I'm going to move the y-axis 0.3175, right there. Now, this is important again, guys, and here we are, we're going to verify. As you see, I've done this a number of times. You can see my little hole from last time. And we are right on the money. That's what we want, repeatability. Uh, now, real quick, you guys asked how I mounted this. Uh, you can see right here, now this one got a little scuffed up, but the bolts in the front mount to the scale. You have to cut these. It's really no big deal. I did it with a Dremel. Uh, and down here, the Y-axis, I did have to drill and tap these. Don't mind the machine, it's filthy. But that's how they mounted up. And I just bent the brackets they give you and 
drill than tap the machine itself. Works fine. You got my handle here. Put it on here with a pivot. Now you want the pivot nice and snug, see? Nice tight fit. Now all we have to do is align it this way. And there we are. So now I just got to line it up with those crosshairs and we should be good to go. I'm just going to mark that with a center drill. At this point in the build, you have to kind of decide how you're going to uh, work out your stop pin and what kind of screws are you going to use. So, in this particular build, and my builds going forward, I'm going to be using these screws. I always use 256 size. See, these are 256 by 325. Uh, but they're titanium screws. I don't recommend you use these for the simple reason that they're incredibly expensive. So guys, this little bag of screws is $150. Use something a little cheaper. You get just stainless steel screws. Um, now, the reason I say that the screws matter is because you have to real you have to figure out how you're going to countersink them. And by countersink or counterbore them, it's how are you going to recess the screws in titanium? So like that guy up here and all this stuff. How are you, you going to do that? Because that matters right now. Now, I'll show you a big one, a big example. And guys, this is a counter bore. All right, so this one would be actually for the bearings. It's carbide tipped. It's got a pilot on it. So this will align with the hole and make sure that you're cutting this big, the, the larger diameter perfectly aligned with that center hole, the pilot hole. So in this case it would be the pivot, so this is a 3 16 pilot and this is a 13 32nd I believe, actually it says it on it. Uh, yes, 13 32nd. It's a little oversized for the bearings but it works. Okay. Now that goes back to, that works for the screws as well. You can't just use a masonry bit like we did on G10 when we were making folders, uh, fixed blades rather. You need a specialty tool. So in this case, with this crazy expensive bag of screws, I also had to buy an equally crazy expensive little tool. That itty bitty little thing. I think this guy was another 120 bucks one little bit but it will recess those screws perfectly now I'm sure there is a way to do this without spending two hundred and fifty dollars for this little setup right here uh, you guys I would say go to USA Knife Maker go to Alpha Knife Supply or something like that and buy yourself a cheaper bag of screws so let's see I probably have one here they also have the titanium screws. So like this one here, you can get a hundred stainless steel screws for twelve dollars. Yeah, twelve dollars, two fifty-six screws. Definitely go this route. There's nothing wrong with them. The titanium is just a little fancier, it looks a little nicer, and I can anodize them. I might not, but I have them, so I'm gonna use them. Uh, but you don't you want to get the longer size and the shorter size. Uh, when in doubt, if you can only get one, always get the longer one because you're going to have to probably cut them to size anyway. Okay, now as far as recessing these 256 screws, you're going to need an end mill. Here it is here. This is the only end mill now it's not a counter uh, a counter bore, so there's no pilot on it. So you have to do a little bit of uh, working around that. But there's no pilot, just flat. So you can't just aim it and hope for the best. It's going to go crooked. Uh, so you have to kind of coax it in. We'll get to that part. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll do this build with these screws. 
Uh, so, anyway guys, actually no, there's a fancy build, so I'll do it with the fancy screws. <laughs> so, uh, oh, by the way, this is a one, this is a one six one counterbore, which is perfectly sized for the heads of those Alpha Knife Supply screws. Much cheaper than the tie connector ones, which are incredibly expensive. Okay, so the whole reason why I'm saying this is the reason this is important is because now that we have our hole marked for our stop pin, if we're going to do a pivot stop pin like this, which is a 1 8 pivot, then you can go ahead and just shoot a 1 8 hole in it. But if I'm going to use fancy screws and that fancy cutter, it is made for what they call a, a through hole. So the pilot, that little pilot there in the front, is made for a number 44 drill bit. So I'm going to have to drill my stop in holes with a number 44 drill bit, then countersink them, then drill for the pivot, the little 1 8 pivot or stop pin or whatever you choose to use. But I'm going to use a 1 8 pivot just for, for ease, really. So. Hopefully that made sense, so we're going to go over to the drill press and drill some number 44 holes. Whoa. Pretty sure we snapped the bit off in there. The joys of working titanium. That's why you buy these little bits by the dozen, guys. One thing you may have noticed, guys, is I'm being very careful not to get this wet or get it covered in oil. We need this template to last a little while. So keep that in mind. So I guess it's going to wrap this one up, guys, because this is getting kind of late. Let's do this here. Yeah. I know we didn't cover much, but we have our stop pin location drilled. We have our pivots drilled and reamed tomorrow or the next video <laughs> tomorrow for me I'm gonna film it tomorrow likely most likely we'll go and we'll start counter boring holes lining things up and cutting out blanks all right guys this is Mike here from Ecom Knives and I'll catch you guys on the next episode <laughs>